Guys, welcome to the I Love Seville show. It's Jerry Miller. It's good to be with you on a Monday. We have a fabulous show lined up um, for you. We are just after the Tom Tom Festival, and Tom Tom undoubtedly has a positive economic impact on the Charlottesville, Almoral County, and Central Virginia communities. And where I'm going with this, the entrepreneurs we're about to introduce you to also have a very strong and positive impact to the point where I was at Mount Ida Reserve on Saturday, a fantastic tasting room, tap house, vineyard, new food, Southern Almaro County, and I got to talking with some folks and lo and behold, this crew of folks, I think was from Northern Virginia um, in their 40s and 50s, and they said they got in a fabulous bus, Siebel Hop on Tours, and made it out to Mount Ida Reserve. And I was like, such a small world, because these guys are coming on the show today. Andre Xavier and John Craig, coming up in a matter of moments, will give some love to make the, the folks who make the program possible. First, interstate pest and service companies since 1969 have been championing and celebrating and servicing Charlottesville and Central Virginia. It started with the first generation, Mr. Wells in 1969 with one truck and a phone booth. He would literally call his next customers from the phone booth after he serviced his first clients and then he would head over and service the second customer. So we salute interstate pests and service companies. We also salute guys, Scott Wagner of Scott Wagner Chiropractic and Sports Medicine, whether it's chiropractic care, physical therapy, sports medicine, Scott Wagner is making our community a better place. Now guys, all I ask is if you like and share the stream. We are live on seven channels. Give it a like, give it a share, um, and we will spotlight these guys even more when you do that. The first um, thing we need to do as Harris Tolber is we're going to go to the studio cam and welcome John Craig and Andre Xavier to the show. Um, gentlemen, thank you kindly for joining us. Thanks for having us. Um, it's a pleasure. I love seeing your fleet of SIBO hop-on tours, buses everywhere. They're beautiful. They represent the area well. And like I said, I was talking with somebody on Saturday at Mount Ida, and they just said they had the most fantastic time on the Seville Hop on Tours. I will start with you. Yes, Open-ended question. Um, we call it the birth story, and the same question for you too as well, John. Before we talk entrepreneurship, how about you, the man, the person, hobbies, passions, interests, what you love about the community, what you love to do? What is Andre Xavier all about? Right, uh, Jerry. So this is actually my second time on your show, so right. thanks for having me once sure. Again. So uh, I'm not going to tell the same story, but um, you know, I've been I'm originally from Brazil. A lot of people know that. I've been in Charlottesville for about 14 years now. I uh, have a beautiful family. I have a young son who is two and a half years old, and uh, you know, my background it is in hotels. I am a former manager for Keswick Hall, uh, the Clifton Inn. So I spent uh, about seven years in Charlottesville in that area. Went to DC, worked for the Four Seasons Hotels. That's when I decided to return and start my own businesses. I love so, it. I love it. You know, uh, we'll talk a little bit about time in a second, but that was the main reason is having a young family, I want to have time to spend with them, so create memories. So by having my own business was the only way I saw that would be possible to do so. I love so, it. Seven years ago, we started Civil Travel, a uh, full-service travel agency. Uh, that's truly my passion. You know, I love to travel. My family and I, we travel extensively. We get to see a lot of places around the world. And the more we travel, the more we like Charlottesville. Um, you know, as a place to raise a family, I can speak with property that, you know, there's very few places in the world that has the quality of life that we have. You know, we have beautiful outdoors. We have great people living here. We have amazing cultural scene because of the university, music, uh, great food. So it's a great place to raise a family. So you know, we really appreciate the community that we have. Um, I love what you guys are doing for the community. We have a lot of people already on the feed. Michelle Pike says, I'm so excited to hear this interview. Hey, Michelle. Um, great guy, great business. Great guys, great business. Your wife, Charlie, is watching right now. John, hey, your page is blown up. <laughs> Seth Batten says, what up over here? Um, I believe he helped you with the purchase of your home, he if did. memory serves correctly. Um, we, how about your story? The birth story, the evolution of John Craig. You're like a, you're like a local legend here man no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> get close to that mic for us <laughs> so uh the the birth story um, yeah originally from gordonsville okay um, from louisa county just outside of charlottesville um and growing up there the town was gordonsville was just uh you know two gas stations and a food line so when we came to town it was usually charlottesville uh so even from a young age i always would tell people 
when I was traveling or elsewhere. I'm from Charlottesville because no one had ever heard of Louisa or Gordonsville. <laughs> Uh, and even now in Charlottesville, most people don't really always know where I'm talking about when I say Gordonsville. Um, I went to college for hospitality and tourism management, thought the uh, ending path would uh, lead uh, to where Andre and I met at Keswick Hall and Golf Club. I was there for about seven years. I uh, started as a, a server and then worked my way up to assistant director of food and beverage. Um, the degree obviously helped, but uh, witnessing the, the 2008 collapse of the, the stock market and what that did to the luxury tourism uh, department, uh, I, I saw this awesome, you know, six-figure salary job that was just plush. We just sat in office and uh, signed off budgets all day, uh, turn into the reality of seven days a week, 24 seven, you're away from your family, you're never really part of that. Um, and I definitely started to feel that as I uh, advanced in my career. So I left Keswick, uh, gave them two months notice and Andre was there. Um, Having dinner and drinks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just about a week before uh, my final days at Keswick were numbered and he said, uh, I just started this tour. You know a lot about beer. And I said, of course, I brought in all the local craft beverages to Keswick Hall and Golf Club. and took away a lot of the, the macro beers and brought in, you know, things like Devil's Backbone, which before it was acquired by Anheuser-Busch was, you know, one of the biggest prides of the Charlottesville area. Uh, brought in Bold Rock, got to meet Brian uh, Shanks and, uh, and, and bring him for, for cider dinner. So when Andre asked me, I said, of course, these are all the people that I know. These are the places I love to go. What better way to... And uh, sure enough, the first tour I did, I said... And this is easy. This is fun. Why are we, uh, what are you doing with one car though? I was like, we should just have a whole bus. Let's just, and so when I finally left Keswick, I had a nice little nest egg and that turned into an idea and then we saw a bus and we bought it and that nest egg went bye-bye and then uh, Hop On became not just a reality but my entire world for the past three years and it's been awesome to see it blossom and grow and huge thanks to Andre for giving me a side job when uh, I didn't think I really wanted one and uh, it turned into something awesome. It's amazing. And, and you guys have seen the buses around town. One of my favorite aspects of their, their transportation company is they're branding the vehicles with their strategic partners, the vineyards, the wineries, the breweries. And I, I think it's a show of good faith. I think it's a way to help um, cut down on overhead in some ways as well. And That's also, nice. it really makes your transportation vehicles stand out even more. Yeah. I never understood why that some of the other businesses weren't doing that as well. Yeah. Um, just it makes perfect perfect sense from a branding and marketing standpoint. Let me throw this to you and, and let's have a discussion where the, you don't have to wait for me to ask the question. You yeah. guys just jump in whenever you want. How many vehicles in the fleet? Um, talk about the evolution of the business. Sure. So currently we have seven buses that are in operation. In Charlottesville. In Charlottesville, one in Valley. And then we have two buses ready to go, once they're ready to go, to be wrapped uh, in the next two weeks or so. That's awesome. Uh, but we own 15 buses total. Okay. So that's our fleet size currently. Um, we have them coming down the pipeline. Uh, I uh, refinished the buses, so we're kind of at the same pace that I can keep up. Uh, you know, our hopes and dreams are to, to buy some land, build a shop, and then streamline the whole process so we can have a team of people doing what I end up doing. Uh, and in my driveway, on my hands and knees, uh, crawling around under the buses, running the speaker wires and, and things like that to have an actual shop is is definitely in the in the works. That's amazing. How, well, how about the difficulty in scaling the business? Because initially, with one bus, you're I don't, you were doing the transportation. Mm -hmm. You were driving the bus. I was driving that every yeah. the first year. That was what I did. Right, I was, and you loved it. Yeah, yeah. It, it does uh, by the three hundred and something tour. You uh, yeah. it loses its luster just a little bit. Uh -huh. Like I'm sure uh, that this show. I mean, the first couple you, you could feel the tension, you could feel the stress, and then now it's like brushing your teeth. You yeah, walk in easy, and you know easy. it's yeah, yeah. and. Right, right. Part of the lure in the whole startup for me was, you know, always having that the adrenaline, adrenaline pumping. Totally and, get it. Yeah. 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 And right. now, it's still pumping because when I see, you know, all eight buses out and about, it's, you know, overwhelming. It's not just, oh, look how great it is. It's, man, we have 140 people right now that we're transporting. Yep. You know, we need to have a backup plan, a backup to the backup plan, a backup to the backup plan because. Uh, yeah. And I think to answer your question about this, to scale the business, the biggest challenge I think for us was 
to retain the same level of quality on the customer service, right? So hiring, it is a big challenge to find, because we don't, we don't only have drivers, right? We have truly ambassadors. Yeah, of local craft yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, They're not just asking, what are your favorite breweries? Which brewery should I go to? It's, exactly. how do you like Charlottesville? Right. How do you, like, what is, what's Nelson County? Is it actually Charlottesville? And having to explain, well, I mean, Charlottesville will claim any, <laughs> you know, Charlottesville claims a very big circle. Right. Um, so that was the challenge, and you know, but I think we have a really good team. We, we do have an awesome, you know, um, yeah, Sharon Bacon or Evan. She's, she's not she's watching. She's our manager. She should yep. be. Uh, she has been uh, the lifeboat that, as we started getting to that point of, man, we have so many things to do. He and I were not yelling at each other, but we could feel the tensions in yeah, a partnership course. building where it's, you know, I feel like I'm doing everything, and he feels <laughs> like he's doing everything. And uh, Sharon was that uh, divider of, you know, taking some things off of his plate and. Uh, I think her biggest flaw is not saying no, it, you know, oh, of course I'll do that as in her yeah. usual. And that's been huge. And just trying right. to find more staff like that as we grow is finding Right. So people. I think so Charlottesville, the scale has been great. So now the next challenge for us is different locations. Sure. Right? So we start with Valley. Uh -huh. So Valley is actually starting to do really well for us. Uh, we have one bus out there. Second mm -hmm. bus will be there very soon. And then we have other markets that we're looking at uh, yeah. a little further away. And that will be the true challenge is how can we maintain the same level of execution at a distance market. So that will be interesting to see how we get there. Well, and what was the point where you thought, and I'll just throw this to yeah. both you guys, was there a point where you thought like we could, we're saturated here in Charlottesville Central Virginia? Because like from my standpoint. Not even close. Right, right. From yeah. my standpoint, you have so much more market penetration we you do, can do but here. Yeah. So much more share you can gain in the market. Yeah. But we feel it, it's smart to, you know, get that first step out towards these areas because, um, because of our price structure. I mean, we're the most affordable way to get around. Uh, and as long as we can start up in an area, we can almost protect it. So we're protecting right. Waynesboro and Stanton right now by doing valley tours because as people are coming to their area, they're not getting gouged with Uber. They're not getting gouged with, um, you know, hourly transportation in a private vehicle to uh -huh. where you're paying, you know, 50 to $60 an hour. All of our tours, uh, it's about $10 an hour or less average. And I think that's why their model is truly unique. And I'm gonna mm -hmm. throw this to you here. Um, the cost is, so if there's two people that need to get on a bus, those two people do not need to rent the vehicle in totality. They Correct. can share the cost with exactly. other people on the yeah. hop-on tour. It's And make best friends. I mean, brilliant. everyone starts the first- uh, It's from, freaking brilliant. From Three Nights yeah. Brewing to the first destination, it's, quiet, awkward, you have the honey slapping knees, right. don't embarrass me today, <laughs> We're gonna, and then by the third stop, well, everyone- Well, because the sauce has gone through their body. Oh, yeah, they, they're right, Facebook right, right. fans, <laughs> they, they know about their dogs' names, their kids' names. They, but, uh, but I think, it won't, not to credit us, but I think we brought the hop on concept to Charlottesville, but that's Correct. not something that we created. Let's yeah. make that very clear. Like, yeah. So we travel a lot, so we get to see a lot of different things, and we saw the opportunity, and pretty much we create a category within a very large industry that we had. You know, The wine tours has always been a successful business in Charlottesville. So we came in with one buzz, and now we're kind of stretched the category, and pretty much we own it. So I love it. I love it. Yeah. So let me throw this to you here. When you, when you, okay, you're a married man. You, you have a son. Yes. Um, you have a lot of skin in the game. You have skin in the game too, <laughs> but I think it goes exponentially to a different degree when there's two people at home counting on you. I'm speaking for personal experience here. Yep. Put that in perspective when you're like, dude, I'm gonna quit the paycheck. Uh, I'm gonna go balls to the wall and I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. When I started this business 11 years ago, I, hadn't, I didn't have that. Now I have a lot more pressure with a wife right. and a son. When you did it, I, was your son already born and your wife, or was no. your son not born? Actually, no, he was born okay. after, so okay. you're okay. right. So, but once I quit that you know, nice job at the Four Seasons to come home, mm -hmm. you're right. I didn't have the responsibilities that I have now. Mm -hmm. So I could really take a chance and go out there. And we did, but uh, you're right, the responsibility now is very different. You know, the type of stress and concerns are different ones. It can fail. There is no, no failure. Exactly. Yeah. Is, yeah. It's not an option. That. It's not an option. And the balance now is how do you have time for the family, for the child, right? That quality time is so important, but also have time for the business, uh -huh. which is a child on its own, right? Needs to be fed, needs to grow, needs to mm -hmm. be exercised. So all that is part of it. Especially when your businesses are vertically integrated around tourism. And mm -hmm. tourism, let's be frank, a lot of that is weekend uh, mm -hmm. focus. Correct. Put that in perspective. Right. So for us, uh, hop on, you're correct. Saturday is 80% of, of our business yeah. is done on Saturdays, right? And it is a challenge for Charlottesville as a destination. So it's not unique to us. So it's a destination challenge. But now as we grow our fleet, now we have to be creative. So mm -hmm. how can we supplement that days that were not being utilized on Saturdays? So that's when it, 
the partnerships with our sister companies come into place. So we, right on, we talk yeah. about weddings. That's a huge part of, uh, for us right now. And I was going to say, to add on to that, um, I mean, what we just did with uh, Charles Wildmo Airport and you know Cho was was awesome to I include us mm -hmm. on bringing back all of the fans uh, after the the national championship uh, and bringing home happy fans was 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 great to do. Right. Um, but just building into that, so now you know we're, we're hopefully going to be considered for any time the athletics have transportation during the week or uh, families coming in, and then them really realizing that we offer this amazing product and. Uh, we're willing to partner with them when we when they asked us we said you know we, we would love to you know we want we value it you know we're going to give you this great deal and they said well, that's a great deal but I mean, we value your time just as much and they actually came back and were gracious enough to say you know we want to make sure that you're taken care of we're not going to just take so right and speaking to myself about the tours all my business are in the tourism industry correct but they are diverse and they they kind of work with different markets right so i have luxury businesses i have mid-tier mid -tier business and i have hop on which is a mass market yeah vertical course, integration mm -hmm. exactly yeah. and you know the mass market's always going to grow faster it has more you know appeal to yeah. the general market so i think that to have a diverse type of business it's helpful as well I love uh, it. I love it. Let me throw this to you here. What was, and John, let me throw it to you, and then Andre, throw your perspective as well. Mm -hmm. Barbara Lundgren says, what's up? Andre, you're hey, one of Barbara. my favorite people. Uh, um, thank you. Council candidate Bellamy Brown watching now. John Updike right now. Ray Cadell just shared it. Thank you, Ray. Um, Charlie says, hey, what's up? <laughs> Bob Schwartz <laughs> says he's watching in New York right yeah, now. Hey, Bob. And he says, I'm <laughs> looking forward to this. Uh, John, your page is blowing up right now as well. If you guys could like and share the page, like and share the post, that would mean the world to us. Candace Johnson. Um, thank you for liking and sharing right now. Um, the challenges of scaling when you're not day to day to going to, uh, you said 15 buses in the fleet? Correct. I mean, talk to me about the challenges. Uh, trust. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think we both uh, had a, like, we both had a very <laughs> trusting relationship from the get go of uh, a clear vision of what we wanted without actually putting a lot of it on paper. It was just a, I don't think, you know, Keswick standards and, and just having that background in tourism right. of uh, wanting to micromanage every aspect because we knew better. And then, then trusting people that uh, the only knowledge that they have is what they've been able to learn from us and what we've been able to communicate to right. them. Uh, and it's hard to communicate, you know, 15 years of, of hospitality. Right. And, and, and or being born in the area, essentially. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and so a lot of it is, for me is, having the faith in someone like Sharon Baker Evans, if I haven't given her enough shout outs, she is awesome, <laughs> um, to say, hey, I'm gonna, you know, this is what I want you to do exactly, and then to listen to someone when they say, you did a great job, you were the one that built it, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but I found a slightly better way to do that, and I wouldn't offer my suggestion, and it's like, yes, of course, and that's most of the awesome things that we do don't necessarily come from us, and you know, as we protect the scalability and as we keep growing, it's, right listening to our employees and them saying hey this route we have these timing issues all the time can we adjust that and we do you know and have that flexibility mm -hmm. um as we grow I, I think the scalability is just to continue to listen to um not only our customers but our staff and right. you know, the people think, good answer ground. right right and the other thing to scalability is you know as we grow you know especially in the transportation business there's always chance for issues and concerns so i think we're on one of the few companies that actually we have as one bus, bus dedicated mm -hmm. exclusively to be as a backup bus mm -hmm. so Ooh. we Is that have tough it's I mean, tough. It's, it's a tough call. I mean, yeah, we, it's I mean, we a eat tough it. call. I mean, we, yeah. we made a conscious decision to not generate revenue on that bus because we're turning away business right to have the empty bus on standby and you learned that the hard way of course yeah, well, exactly. i mean it was actually not necessarily you learned it the, the hard first way year. We always, you know, as a hotel manager yeah. and being the luck, we always had management. backup plans. So yeah. it's about managing people's expectations. Right? Well, was there a time where the bus broke down? Yes, and you absolutely. Guys were on the yeah. side of the road Within ten like, minutes, the backup was there. So nice. actually, those are probably That's our now. best reviews. But I mean, I mean, our first yeah. year. So we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was petrifying because when we had one bus. We had right. one bus, and then yes. the backup is his suburban and his wife driving. You know, their other car, the sedan, to be able to come. Um, yeah. And just being able to think on the fly and. And people appreciated, I mean, I think we've gotten more reviews about how we've uh, handled crisis, situ not crisis, but handled disappointments and right. saying, you know, you weren't satisfied, you know, don't just go home upset. Tell us, let us make it right. If you right. are upset about anything about it, uh, you know, one of us is there now, Sharon, is there to say, you know, we, we're, we know that you're not having a great time. What can we do? What can we do? And so... Right. 
yeah, that first bus, uh, and that was in our first year, uh, within the first six months. And Where do you find the buses? So, so that's actually part of our trade secret. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that's, that's right there. That's yeah, right. Yeah. We do have um, a relationship with they, like they local are, provider. We repurpose buses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll uh, just say that we, um, so part of our, um, yeah, our sauce, our secret sauce, is that uh, we don't spend $90,000 on a brand new vehicle. Right. We bring an older vehicle back to life. And it's amazing to hear people that say, you have all such nice new buses. And I'm like, well, these are actually like seven years old. And we've, I mean, a lot of the engine's been good. replaced. Yeah, oh, I mean, absolutely. That, and, the, and they're immaculately taken care of um, and, uh, and taken, uh, and take, taken care of inside and out. Right. And mechanically, they're sound. Exactly. It's just. We, all, we say this often and just throwing it out there, like the restaurant industry is evolving from like the white tablecloth um, mm -hmm. napkin to like the paper tower, the paper napkin, mm -hmm. um, where like I think even transportation is evolving as well to like this more approachable, like when you get on one of your buses, it's so dope, dude. You like, there's music playing, you got the, uh, the TVs, disco ball, disco lights, the yeah. TV yeah. light. I mean, it's just like approachable. It's like chill and like laid back. And I feel like that's like what millennials and Gen Yers and Gen Xers want is this like, this is like my room. Yeah, and, and more than that is to like play down the expectation. I mean, I think most of the people that have never heard of us that signed up through TripAdvisor or something that didn't see any of the pictures and just said, oh, I want to go on a beer tour. Right. They're expecting like a van, a windowless a van to pull up. Right. Or, yeah, yeah. And, and then we show up in this and they're like, wow, I mean, I don't have to climb over somebody to sit in the seat. I can just walk on, comfortably sit down. Wait, they're handing me a water as soon as I sit. And there's snacks, there's charge. I mean, to take the expectations to a new level, I think that is what millennials want is to be surprised. and. I mean, that's how and I we think can the surprise. biggest thing too, and I told that and last time I was here, is John is truly the face of the business, uh -huh. right? So to be authentic, mm -hmm. I think the authentic factor of Hopon is one of the biggest reasons why we're successful. And you cannot fake that. Right. right. It's Hashtag not a standard filter. thing. It's, it's true <laughs> who we are, and yeah. that's how... How we do it? Well, let me throw this to you. Tough question for you. And guys, the, the page is blowing up. Billy Farley, is that one of your yeah, team members? Yeah, Billy does yeah. a great yeah. job. He says, Andre and John are the best, fantastic bosses who truly care about no. every aspect of their business and all their employees. Uh, Josephine Humphrey, CBS 19, thank you for watching right now. Thank Eric you. Labar, yep. I'm so Eric. proud of these two guys being in the hospitality industry yep. myself. These Thanks guys are rock Eric. stars. Um, a lot of folks watching. We have folks watching in Charlotte. We have folks watching in D.C. Talking about Billy, he actually started a company. His own business now. Yeah, his own business. He has an um, Italian ice business. Yeah. Oh, chill, yeah. chill Bills Italian yeah. ice. Okay. Um, yeah. He's done great with it. And, you know, picking my brain, I'm like, I'm yeah. like, and he's like, I'm not going to be able to drive as much anymore. I was like, great. You know, I don't We're want you to feel like very you're happy for him. Yeah. Like, and he, and he will do, do well. He, well he, he's a good worker. Here's the question I have for you is you are a serial entrepreneur, um, very big picture thinker. I'm trying to get right. him to stop a little how, bit. How <laughs> difficult was it for you with this business that has like mass market appeal? How difficult was it for you to say, John is going to be the face of the business. Right. I'm going to be a behind the scenes guy. So because that's strategic. It is strategic. Exactly. Yeah. It was very purposely done. Right. right. So because I do know my strengths, uh -huh. and I do know my my weaknesses. Right. Yeah. So surrounding yourself with successful and capable people is the secret to success. Mm -hmm. So John, you know, I saw the potential he had. I knew John for many many years. I knew he truly cared for anything that he did. So he put all 100 percent in. So to have the opportunity to have a partner like that, it's invaluable, right? Without the partnership, Hopon would not exist and would not be successful. So, but you're right, it's, it takes a little bit of a pride to kind of swallow your pride and say, okay, I'm, I'm behind the scenes, which but I'm think, totally comfortable with. I think your strengths are, still come into play and people don't even notice it. When right. they, when I'll see them on a tour and they say, you know, I, I spoke to your reservations assistant <laughs> or something and he was so knowledgeable about this and that, and they don't know that they're talking yeah, to the, the, the owner, owner of the right, company. Right. Yeah. And, and, and he was able, he was so nice and I don't know if I'm gonna get him in trouble, but he gave me this or that perk or up, and I was like, oh, I won't get him in trouble. And it's fun to like, because you know, anybody that doesn't know um, thinks that you know that's just somebody that we've trained, but right, he handles reservations, uh, finance, everything that logistics, logistics, yeah, yeah. strategy, yeah. Yeah. exactly, yeah. business, yeah. the back office, I, I right. operation, yeah. logistics, yeah. exactly. But, Let me throw this to you here. How, and I'll throw the same question to both of you. How would you describe yourself as an entrepreneur? So strengths and weaknesses. Sure. My strength, I think I'm truly good at being able to see opportunities uh -huh. on markets that vision. nobody else can see is vision. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I'm pretty good at uh, conveying a message. So I'm able to pre not persuade, I don't like the word persuasion, but I'm able to get people to see the opportunities and kind of communicate that effect effectively. Um, 
I'm big vision for sure. I like to surround myself with capable people. So I think that's another strength of mine to know when to ask for help and when to hire and help out, when to you know rely on someone else. I think that's very important as well. Um, customer service for me is huge. So being on the tourism industry, right? We're in a I see a huge responsibility on my business because I'm the one in charge of creating, helping my guests create memories through travel, a trip to Disney, the family for the first time, or with hop on an awesome wine tour or civil tours, private tours. We're creating memories, right? And time, going back to the thing about being entrepreneurs, time is the most valuable asset. Most that precious we have. commodity. It is. Yeah. You no, know, you cannot buy. Right. You cannot ask for more. You never know when it was going to finish. Right. So, and you cannot take any, once we're gone, we're not going to take our cars, we're not going to take any money, we're going to take memories. And to be in an industry that allows us to create that with our guests is invaluable. So I think that's the most rewarding part of being an entrepreneur in the tourism industry. So I really kind of appreciate that. How about the weaknesses? Weaknesses, so... Um, you got any? I do, I have a lot actually, so I'm kind of... Uh, we should chime in on each other's weaknesses. Yeah, John probably can tell me more. But <laughs> should I, we do that? No, no, no. no, no there's not a <laughs> roast. No, there's a roast. <laughs> um, you know, I kind of sometimes take a lot on myself and uh, kind of delay or kind of procrastinate a lot. Uh -huh. So I do have a tendency to procrastinate uh -huh. on things. Um, what else, John? Uh, like when we do the Lock and Music, music Festival, which is, is an awesome event, he helps. Uh, Andre does all of the room blocks. We have uh, packages so people can do it. But on the actual event handling, hordes of people coming at him, you know, he, oh, uh, you do. <laughs> those are one of the times where I, I just walk, I'm like, I got it, you know. Hey, guys. Right. Yeah, you know, just be happy. For, you know, but you're so serious about making sure that you're thinking about their experience, what's going on when they have a mass market of people coming at right. you. I feel In like a lot of ways, of you guys are so very different. Right. Completely. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. like, just like, a, like almost like a married couple, yeah. <laughs> the differences like make the businesses better. Yeah. They're yeah. so oh. complimentary. Oh, yeah. And, and that's what we tell people, you yeah. know, make sure, business partners, because <laughs> we'll be at a thing and we'll just be talking shop back and forth. And, and fitting, you know. finishing each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I see that. Yeah. Yeah, I see absolutely. that. In some ways, he drives you crazy, doesn't he? Sometimes, yes, he does. Yes, jo John is a very creative person, I would say. So a lot of his ideas, a lot of times, are not the best ideas, right? So it's my job to make bring bring him back to reality exactly. and put yeah. sense. Because I I tell him all the time, like, it's not worth for us to implement ideas that are not revenue generator, right? A lot of times you have to be careful because the business has reality, to, to be a healthy profit had you not been here exactly been, you know <laughs> john john actually he's the president of red shoes civil yeah, so he has a very he there. has a very big heart so yeah. we have to watch that at sometimes because you're saying sometimes you got to reel in the pro bono stuff for red shoes oh, is that, or, example? that is a great example. i mean just amenities on the bus too of you know people are already giving us five star reviews do you really need to spend the extra money because we just added tablets to each of the buses and one of the things we ask is that's dope. is it going to help you know i'm like well our drivers are going to have an easier time, uh, music's gonna be more reliable. Uh, all of it. He's like, right. but is, are we gonna make any more money? I'm like, no, but it's just gonna add to the value. He's like, well, if it adds to the driver's safety and then they we're using it for GPS now, then yes, it's value added. But right. I just want to, you know, add as many perks as we I can. Free giveaways. <laughs> yeah, it's dope. Yeah. It makes yeah. the experience more memorable, and it's mm -hmm. a separation point. It's a value proposition. Where, where you know you versus your competition. Because that's right. not in a lot of the competitors there. I gotta throw it to you, your strengths and weaknesses, and you gotta chime in with some. Yeah, yeah, he's got plenty of weaknesses. Yeah. Um, <laughs> strengths. I mean, I never intended to be an entrepreneur. I, if I ever was going to, I, I you know, my background was in uh, food and beverage and resort management. So I'd always dreamed of having like, a cool restaurant and living on the downtown mall uh, and managing Blue Light back in the day. I was like, oh, I could do this, um, and then. The, there's just too many restaurants in Charlottesville and I wanted to stay in Charlottesville and it just was the right time. And now I don't think it's a matter of, I want to be an entrepreneur. I just want to make Charlottesville a cooler place. And so Same. things after hop on, like we're talking, you know, post hop on, not that we're going to kill it or sell it or anything right. else, but, um, once it's able to run itself and we have the team exactly where we want it, I know I envision Andre and I doing something, you know, awesome next, whether mm -hmm. it's, Hostels or hotels or combinations. Yeah. We've on, been on spitballing for, for sure. a while. Yeah. Um, so I think some of my strengths are just having, uh, like he was kind of patting me on the back, but uh, when I do go all in, I go all in. And that's been a hard You part. go balls to the wall. Yeah, I mean, yeah. trying yeah. to go all in for, for hop on, um, not having a job. Uh, 
girlfriend at the time had actually said, <laughs> you should get a real job. And I was like, okay. Um, you know, this is, is trying to make this into... You know, that was an insult. Life. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> luckily, <laughs> she's... Luckily, she's... Yeah, the hell out of well, me. She's, she's no longer no the longer, girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so way, long. way, yeah. Right. Um, no, she's, she's a great person, but that was... Uh, um, and so I think my weaknesses would be trying not to do everything uh, and trying not to dedicate myself. Like I, I, when I do get involved in things, I do kind of get blinded of, is this going to make me money or you know, is, is it going to pay the bill? Or, or it's you just, can also I have say a really that. good idea and I want to make it a reality. Right. Um, or you can say you don't get to see, you don't look through the big picture. Like yeah. you're not a bigger picture person. Versus me, who I am. So yeah. you, you I'm not as cautious. Me. Yeah, I don't step back True. and exactly. examine before I just exactly. jump off. Yeah. Well, in some ways, in some ways, um, that can be a strength if it's reeled in the right way. Correct. Which I which, feel like that's what yeah. that's what you're offering. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What is the next step? I mean, because I would think with any transportation company that's in a market like this where it's so brewery and vineyard heavy, I would think one of the main focuses would be how can I make money on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Right. Again, that's the destination challenge. Yeah. I mean, so the, the us answer and every to hotel that in Charlottesville is Charlottesville has the same problem. Exactly. Yeah. The, right. ans yeah. the, the answer to that is, and that's going to affect everyone, is how the destination markets itself as a midweek destination. Yeah. So until we answer that question as a destination, no one, no individual business will be successful in achieving that goal of. Well, how do we do it? So, I mean, you guys have. And so game. yeah, uh, and I don't, I'm not sure that. It's ever gonna change. So I think for us, uh, partnering with with things that are already here that like could could benefit exactly yeah. that could benefit from our services, uh, instead of trying to pull people in that don't right. ex you know that aren't traveling to this area during the midweek. Um, you know, University of Virginia is a huge, huge employer. You right. know, revenue generator. Everything in this town. Um, if we could tap into anything related to well, that. And to I think, you know, and we discussed that last time on the show about the CACVB. So I think, you know, the, as a community, the tourism board has a huge mission and responsibility to promote ourselves as a destination that welcome midweek business. Um, you know, watch a Tom Tom that talks about the uh, Amazon headquarters. You know, there's going to be an impact in Charlottesville. You know, how can we benefit from those high paying jobs, people who are there? I mean, they're going to want to enjoy themselves and you know mm -hmm. come on the weekends that's great but how can we capture them during the week you know UVA is here there's a lot of opportunity to cross work with them so how can we capture that business and that's the job of the destination well, to you're promote a huge that. proponent of the convention center I am the I, need of the convention exactly center. And it, yeah. it's going to happen you know we we believe that's going to happen but again we can have any build we want we can have an awesome convention center but if you're not selling the right way as a destination it's not going to be successful. What are your thoughts, John? I mean, a convention center would be great to, to attract you know, conventions, I guess, you know what they're for, but yep. I don't think that's the end-all, be-all of how we, we change things in, in Charlottesville just by adding you know, one building. I think, as you are saying before, it needs to be a unified effort from the tourism of not just let's build a convention center and then directly try to flood that. Right. Let's talk about our you know creating Charlottesville as the Disneyland of... Um, DC business, like the, the playground of DC business. We already have the vineyards and wineries there, um, really creating a one and all right. package. Create an infrastructure, right? Yeah. So tourism, Charlottesville has such a huge potential, and you know, and I'm very thankful for Charlottesville for allowing me to create a great businesses that provides the infrastructure for us as a destination. But I think there's much more space for growth, and you know, we're taking advantage of that. But at the same time, you know, as a destination, we have to have that conversation. How can we become a successful midweek yeah, destination? Yeah, and I think that's the question that everybody has. I mean, we have a lot of clients in the tourism sector that are also asking this question as well. And they're like, Jerry, generate midweek business for us. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not a magician. No, you can't. Yeah, that's I one thing you cannot that. promise. I, There's I, no I, way I, to. And I pass on the business. Yeah. I literally say I cannot do that. No. I would rather I would rather underpromise and overdeliver on everything, and literally pass on the money, as so I don't disappoint somebody. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of people that we need to get to um, that that are jumping on the feed. In fact, let's get to these here. Sharon um, is sharing a lot of uh, things. There here. we go. Um, let me give Sharon some love. First, she says uh, Andre and John are people who truly love and give back to Seaville community on a professional and personal level. Um, she gives some props to your dad. My dad um, is Bill awesome. Craig for helping renovate the buses. Yeah, very thankful. Um, to him, yeah. John and Andre are the best bosses and friends anyone can ask for. 
Amati Harbor, thank you for joining us. Thank you kindly for watching. Jacob Conley, thank you kindly for watching. Um, like and share the feed, no matter uh, what stream you are on, guys, that would mean the world to us. Um, I gotta ask you this, um, August 12th, start with you. Um, near and dear to all of us because of our passion and our commitment to Charlottesville. We love Charlottesville. Um, not only do we love Charlottesville um, personally, but our living is tied to positivity in Charlottesville. I love Seville. Seville, hop on tour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. August 12th, open edit. How did it impact your business? Uh, the, the day of, I was actually on tour um, out with Dave Warwick, the head brewer for Three Notch Brewing, and, and some other friends. And we're watching in the updates on our phones, and it's just you know, you kind of feel that uh, out-of-body experience of this can't be Charlotte. You know, this isn't Charlottesville. And to see just the mass amounts of people. Um, and then since that day, it didn't affect us uh, necessarily with sales. But um, really? that weekend and the weekend after, we had a few cancellations. And we had people calling in to, to ask, is it safe? And, and just having to explain to people that it wasn't Charlottesville. And none of that was Charlottesville. I live, you know, in, in Fifeville, in the heart of Charlottesville. And there's not... You know, there's not riots on the street. That just doesn't happen. There's not, um, you know, this underlying anger that, that erupts like that. Most of those people were coming from out of town that had no part to be here and to claim our town as this, you know, epicenter of, of hate. Um, and I don't know if you wanted to add anything, yeah. Andre, about it, but it was just, it was disheartening. Exactly. No, as a, you know, a resident of Charlottesville, absolutely, it was the most horrific thing could happen to us. But uh, as a business, um, in a, in a way, actually, did not affect us as much wow. because we are taking people out of Charlottesville. Right. If you think about people going to Nelson County, Crozet, so in a way, we did the the effect of a negative impact on the business did not happen to us as much. The other thing I notice is on my other company, Civil Tours, we do have a Civil War history tour. Uh -huh. I work with Rick Britton, a really well-known historian, uh -huh. and that tour in particular has seen a growth of almost 400 percent. Get out of town. We're booked. Solid. Of folks wanting to see the monuments? Coming here on the Robert E. Lee statue and yeah. seeing the Civil War. So I think it opened the dialogue for opportunity for educate people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's history. So we have to educate ourselves and understand, you know, what happened in the past it doesn't belong necessarily in the present. Sure, right? sure. Good yeah. answer. Did August 12th impact your other businesses at all? Um, a little bit on the wedding room blocks. Yeah. Yes, we did see some cancellations, people not getting married here. But I think at this point, we're we're pretty much back to normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, I think now with UVA basketball team winning the championship really changed It put us the on the light. map again for a better reason. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I mean, now we're, I think that we have huge. A, a huge opportunity to, as a destination again, to sell that happy, exciting times that now we are in with the championship. One of the best things that I think has happened for Charlottesville, I also say one of the worst things as well, is being named the happiest and the best place to live in yeah. America. Okay, one of the best reasons because it gets incredible attention. One of the tough parts is it's undoubtedly driving up the cost of real estate, mm -hmm. um, the cost of living in Charlottesville in general. It's bringing a lot of folks with serious money to the area to move to the area. Undoubtedly good for your businesses, undoubtedly good for my businesses as well. Um, I'm gonna throw this to you as well. What is the role of local government to help return Charlottesville's image or brand back to one of the best places to live in America? I think not relying on outside companies to paint the picture for us. I mean, uh, I think I was on your last talk when you were on here, yeah. I was watching, or it might have been another guest that said, uh, it was uh, the, to have, you know, um, a raffle, not raffle, but a um, Make a it open source. Yeah, the exactly. content. Yeah, open yeah, so source. Yeah. It have yeah. a contest yeah. of. Uh, we have amazing artists in town. I mean, the first right. Fridays would be yeah. a great example of. There's plenty of creative people here, yeah. and instead of just expecting an outside company or outside anyone to be able to really know Charlottesville and how to market it, right. uh, I think is the mistake. Um, That's what to say. You know, the local government, especially on the tourism aspect, you know, you need some entrepreneurship aspect to the government where they can search for, you know, uh, uh, kind of partnerships with private companies who can help the destination to really promote itself. Um, sometimes we get really kind of tied up to the politics of things, uh -huh. and politics is not as effective as, you know, someone who really wants to do well and has the right intentions to do the right thing. So right now, you know, last time I was here, I did offer the CACVB staffing for a kiosk on the mall. Right, mm -hmm. and nothing and nothing happened. So yeah. I'll be honest with you, at this point, I'm withdrawing that offer because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm here to help. Uh -huh. you know, I cannot force your hand to accept my help. Right. So at this time, you know, if they want to talk, we'll be open to talk to them again. But at 
this time I just not even interested anymore in offering the help. Why did you, why did you, um, I mean, how do you think the community has responded? You grew up in Gordonsville, mm -hmm. you have Charles in your blood. Um, how do you think the community has responded post A12? I think it put a very bright light on um, an issue, but I think that it's been magnified to a certain point where um, both sides are feeling like, uh, like I don't know if it was even as acknowledged before that that there was ever even you know racial tensions. If you lived on the downtown mall, you kind of lived in this bubble. You didn't, um, and now as you know, gentrification is starting to happen, and Belmont's no longer you know Belmont mm -hmm. is Belmont now. Right. They're adding restaurants, and th and I think as it's growing, this has just become a bigger and bigger wound. I think it, it's what it, what it started at, um, and I think we're just picking at it instead of trying to find a way to, to solve it. And I think affordable housing has been um, tossed around a lot by the city council, but there hasn't been yeah, a, an effective, a, any action. effective yeah. action. I mean, right. even with the first, uh, is it Sixth Street, um, uh, that they were going to, they gave a million dollars or something to the... Oh, you're talking the Star Hill neighborhood? To the New Hill Development Corporation? No, 500K? To, it was... Um, Right there by Mount Zion Baptist Church, the, that Section 8 housing community that they were going to, you know, try to revitalize. And instead of making us a subsidized rent area, we should be, you know, trying to help people find their first home and trying to protect, you know, against all these huge housing developments that right. go in that have inflated themselves to where you can't afford it if you're in Charlottesville and you yeah. work. Well, anywhere other than a exactly, you know, but for the housing, dollars. it is a challenge, and Charlottesville has a very tough one to solve because we don't have a lot of no land, land no right? Yeah. But how do you solve that? A way is, I see and was commented on this show before is transportation, yeah. right? Culturally speaking, Charlottesville has a very anti-public -tra transportation mentality, right? We all want to have the convenience of driving our own cars whenever we want, however you, we want. But to rely on public transportation, that would allow you know, affordable housing to be built not very far, but far enough in right. different counties. And People could use that if, if it's effective. They could be using that, you know, public transportation to get to and from work. Totally. Right. Totally. So I think that's a way. Yep. It's a more affordable way than to redevelop land. And, and you things. travel a lot, so you see this yeah. firsthand. Oh, absolutely. I mean, no. any major city, right? In U.S., not as much, but in Europe and uh -huh. in South America, people rely on public transportation. Now, yeah. One is effective. You just went to Brazil, right? Yeah, I'm from Brazil. Yeah. So I was just there about yeah. a couple months ago. And right. Now, Sao Paulo is a huge city, 17 million people. So imagine if everyone wants to live in the city. It's just not possible, right? right? So people live far away, and they have subways, they have buses. That kind of makes that connection. Of course, it does affect the quality of life. Right. That's a, a reality because you're spending time traveling to and from work. But there is how things work, right? If you want to progress, there's a cost to it. So if you want affordable housing, you may have to live a little further from the city. Um, Doug, Brooks, Doug Brooks is watching, um, good friend of the show. He says, well said. Um, this is from, let's see, Charles Elkins. Um, Charles Elkins yeah. says, uh, Jerry, it's programs like yours that polish the true gems throughout our Charlottesville area. I love seeing these two guys on the show. Um, he says, hop on tours are the best. John is a master at his craft, a real great guy. Yep. I remember their first trip. What was the first trip like? So Charlie Elkins had... Uh, was he, is he a team member? No, no. He, he is um, so, actually so, Louisa. He's, he, he's his, like son, John, yeah, his son played uh, sports with me. Um, he had a Louisa version of, uh, of the bus, and uh, you know, when we first started, he was asking about, he was trying to uh, unload his bus to us, and I, I warned him, I was like, you know, if you get caught without a license and this and that, the, it's not worth it, and uh, he was like, oh, I didn't even realize, no harm, no foul. Um, but he showed us, um, we had actually used his bus when our bus had, uh, had an issue. Broke down, yeah. Yeah, when we were, that yeah. issue we were talking about before, yeah, yeah. Um, if I remember right. There's been a lot of tours since now and then, um, but he is Gus the bus. Uh, he gave me the line, whatever happens on the bus stays on the bus. <laughs> uh, I learned a lot from him, and I think my friends uh, actually ended up using that bus. Uh, he had taken us on a tour, okay. is probably what he's referring What's to. What's the next, what are the uh, open-ended question? The three and five year goals for Seville Hop on Tours. So let's say three years, we're going to have at least two new destinations. Okay. Northern Virginia is one that okay. we're actually on the works right now. Our and own maybe, shop. Yeah, uh, shop sick, for dude. sure. That's awesome. Yeah. And then five years, 
that's a question that yeah. you know because <laughs> the thing with hop on is we get approached a lot by investors it's a business that gets a lot of attention you know people asking about franchising and all those things so five years it's kind of tough to answer right now but so you might exit maybe some private equity or so maybe private it's, cash infusion takes a piece yeah, of business well, it's always a possibility well, yeah. absolutely and i think just as the charlottesville is locally owned and operated um one of my future hopes and goals is that we find someone that you know starts off as a driver in uh, the new locales as we spread out, and they show a passion and commitment, and you know they say, "What can I do to build equity, to have equity in it, and then to be able to relinquish some of it to someone so they can have ownership over, say, right. the valley because they live in Stanton, they know Stanton like we know Charlotte." Right. So you could see and j jump in here. I'll hold my thought. Jump mm -hmm. in here. What were you going to say? So I say five years, correct. So I think what John and I would discuss a lot is how can we be part of Hop On uh -huh. without working 12 hours a day on it, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. So that's the goal. And I think we're almost a third of the way there. So we're pretty much finding ways to make Hop On independent from us. So then we can retain ownership, right? And still earn uh, a paycheck, profits, yeah. a paycheck yeah. from it. You were right, asking right. about scalability yeah. earlier. I mean, setting in place right now standards that uh, we actually had a disagreement with one of our drivers, like, why are you using, you know, all of these different softwares to clock me in and out? Just write it down on a piece of paper. I was like, because, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot now with six drivers, right. but we're going to have 25 drivers next year, and then we're going to have, you know, 50 part-time drivers in the year from there. So trying to make sure that we have all of the steps in place now to where as we grow, we don't have to still go back through and hand write things in right. or you know we're setting up the systems for a big company even though we're still Correct. extremely small. i love it i love yeah. it so we have um a, a comment i'm going to relay to you this uh -oh. is from candace baker okay um she would say i would say seville could take a lesson from boulder the downtown area was designed by the same person yep. both cities are affluent and educated yet it's not about what to do versus just doing it where is the board who runs it and how can the average citizen be a part of city decision making um so she's city basically council meetings. yes okay yeah, city council yeah. meetings. Um, go and be involved. Walk up there and speak to the city well, councils and address. It's true, but to answer her question, how you get involved. You know, perfect example is last time I was on the show here, uh, you kind of gave me the idea. Say, hey, apply to be on the board of the CACVB. Committees. Right? Yeah, there's committees. Which I, di which I did. Still looking for people. And haven't heard back. That's you know? crazy. I know, and here's the yeah. worst part, you know. as of, pisses me yeah, off. Working, you know, for four seasons, it's like, hey, you know, if someone applied to the job, they don't get the job. You send a nice rejection letter, you know, just, mm -hmm. hey, sorry, not the time. Right. Not even a rejection letter. Right. You know, it's just... But so in comparison as to <laughs> comparing us to Boulder, yes, the malls are, are very, very similar. But you know Boulder? Uh, I have not, but I've stu I've read upon the guy that actually went across, and there's like 63 malls that were put in just like ours, and we're one of like the last three remaining. It's us, okay. Burlington, Vermont, and Boulder, Colorado, oh. the three ones that still have been able to sustain, continue, sustain, sustain so. it. Yeah. Correct. Um, but I think we're. I mean. I was talking to someone at the TomTom Tom Festival this weekend about Portland and Austin's, you know, keep Portland weird, and all of that was to keep the things, the town smaller, to not have the influx of people like you're speaking of, but um, part of Charlottesville's growth is that we're, we're bringing in, you know, ideas from elsewhere, mm -hmm. um, but I think what makes us unique is tiny, you know, companies like ours and having, having say in the city council, whether you're, uh, you know, just like a citizen or if you're in a small business owner whatever it may be instead of just it being directed by a, th a couple big big players right uh -huh. and exactly our decisions are based on our employers right so yeah. we do pay a living wage to our staff so you know it's, i think probably that's the most rewarding part of owning hop on is to look at our you know pnl and see how much we have contributed to the local economy through that. payroll right i love that too. i mean last year it was close to three hundred thousand dollars nice right? so that impact is directly by us nice. and knowing that money stays locally right so also I terrifying think, exactly it's a huge responsibility yeah. exactly it's a huge responsibility yeah. um but it's kind of rewarding to know say hey we are making a difference on people's lives what do you see i mean why you know you said richmond you said the shando valley you say charlottesville why northern virginia just because of the mass of people there well loudon county is a it's richer version of charlottesville okay. let's put it that way if you can imagine it's that. a more affluent version more affluent version really? than charlottesville so john actually did a great yep. job we did the virginia with distillers the virginia. associations uh we did a um, distillery tour of virginia so we were in loudon county uh, sperryville we 
uh, all the Richmond. distillers yeah, in Virginia, we, pretty much. We you were driving then? I was yeah. driving the. the it was a multi-day nice. tour. Yeah, yeah that's an cool. important one. So that's why you drove. Of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they uh, they had a great time. But when I was in Loudon, they have just as many uh, wineries Wine as we do. They have breweries popping up in all the city centers, and they have distilleries that are popping, and they have, you know, ten. Hundred times more people, and they have that, large hotels, right. very large hotels. So one of the hotels approached John and said, "Hey, we'd love to have you guys here. You yeah. know, we can pretty much guarantee you X number of guests every week." They're asking all the time. Um, so, awesome. So, so that's opportunity much. knocking. Exactly. And you're so like, we, I gotta yeah. open the door. Exactly. We cannot. You know, we're, we've been waiting already over a year for that, but you know, now is the time that we have to go there. Eventually, this business, and I don't want to assume here. I see a business where it's like you have this dope headquarters that is like <laughs> has this like fantastic call center with a fantastic technology where you can see where your buses are all across the Commonwealth. You guys are working at a corner offices out of this dope headquarters. It's going to have it's potentially shipping like containers. a mechanic <laughs> shop on site yeah. where yeah. perhaps you're servicing the yeah. buses on site and not needing to go to third parties. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, I mean, how do we get to that point? Well, so, yeah. I think we're halfway there. I mean, technology is talking about. So for a small companies, we have GPS tracking our buses. So uh -huh. lifetime, we can look on their phones at any time to see that. where they are, how fast they're going, all that. Uh, we do have, uh, you know, a clocking system that is automated. Yeah, we can see, home where base, so we can see in, when they clock in, on. how many minutes they are. So we, we're, we create that infrastructure, right? Um, I would say we're a year to a year and a half for so, the shop. And, yeah. and we've... Uh, we made a conscious effort. You know, we were focused so much on Charlottesville, and you know, that's not. You know, Siva Hop on Tours isn't going away, but we are going to be uh, attempting a slight brand shift uh, with our growth in these next seven buses that will be wrapped in the next five months. Uh, they'll be branded Virginia Hop on Tours uh, with sick. that anticipated right. growth of, you know, if if we can't get into Loudon uh, as fast as we want to, we can use those buses here because we haven't even gotten close to touching the the max. Uh, the point, maximum, yeah. yeah. I that mean, is so sick. That's when you we have to worry. We have to be creative. You have to spend more marketing dollars. You're on the you know WNRN uh, radio ads all the time. One of six one. You know you're always trying to to market yourselves. Um, we haven't even gotten to that point, and so I feel bad turning down. You know Ian. Um, I'm sure he's gonna be watching. <laughs> Charlie ever. says, your wife says, and we can tell if our drivers are speeding or not. Indeed, yeah. yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, we get alerts. Virginia Hop on Tour, she's pumped about. Guys, like and share the feed no matter the stream you're watching. Give it a like, give it a share. Um, let me throw this to you here. Do you, wh why the real estate license? You're recently a realtor. Yeah, got a real estate. yeah I did know that. Um, He's learning Keller to diversify. And I'm on the Find Homes team in Charlottesville. Uh, Cynthia Hash is an awesome mentor. Uh, she's been a great help of just learning the, the beginning steps of the real estate business but uh if andre had not been there out to dinner <laughs> for me to get pushed down this cliff of hop on uh i would have probably continued with real estate then i was already taking the real estate online class um you would you would you're gonna crush that just because you know well, the area, uh, well, you're such saying, a people person. And most of the most of the yeah. things that are being directed from uh, both Keller Williams and the Fine Homes team is, you know, go to all these network events, go to this. I'm like, I have networked out. I am. Uh -huh. I know the people. I, that's all I do. Is like, I, I think I know enough people. It's just re reconnecting with everyone and letting them know, hey, I have my real estate license. I'd be happy to, you know, let's go explore homes. I mean, it's uh, the last. Uh, so I had my first um, home buyer and uh, ratified contract. Home inspection went well. We're waiting for everything else, but. Uh, she was like, you seem so patient. I said, well, it's, you know, this is to my first year. And I didn't completely let on what was going on. And uh, she was like, well, you know, did you seem excited about every house we went to? I was like, yeah, it's like a scavenger. I mean, we get to go look. Right. Like, how many times do you, you walk down explored. the street and you see a home and you're like, right. that's a beautiful home. Now I get to yeah. go walk through it and check out, you know, well, all and, the, the And, you know, you didn't say that, John, but I know you do have a passion for architecture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, was gonna you, be, you, I was an architecture exactly. driven major so before you, I visited JMU you and appreciate found out that I was about 75% the estate, female. Yeah. And then... Oh, I guess hospitality and tourism <laughs> management will work. John Craig. My boy Brent Waters is watching right now. He's the North Carolina racquetball champion watching yes. in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, what's up, Brent? Hope you're doing well. Um, I would think with what you do and meeting so many people that are coming to this area, and then that they was, get like hooked by Charlottesville, they're like, oh my so that, gosh, this my, is amazing. Yeah, it's, it's, and you're like, oh, you want to move? I'm Live so right. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love so, it. Uh, I love my, it. My plan is, and then all the advertisements that we have on the bus. So we have videos that are playing all the time on the bus. And I actually have um, slightly <laughs> hidden my 
uh, Live Civil, well, and it I'm redirects my website to my. And I'm sure uh, Andre was trying to figure out a no. way how to monetize. Actually, no, actually, yeah. <laughs> actually, I, John, I, that's yeah. gonna be two fifty. I just <laughs> learned that, John. So I'm glad to know to know that. So I'll be sending you the invoice yeah. for yeah. Yeah. advertising. Yeah. Absolutely. Why not run um, as someone who owns an advertising agency? I mean, that's what you walked into here was an advertising agency. Yeah. Uh, Jacqueline, your girl from Barbecue Exchange, uh, is watching. Love we love Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Love barbecue. Love Good you people. Too, Good Jacqueline. People. Bob Shot is watching. Why not have the screens that are running on? the buses monetized they are I mean, they are, they are they yeah. so yeah so i'm saying i, I snuck in are. my free one uh, so the, the company, way but. we sell <laughs> wrap spots that includes the segment inside of the video about 30 seconds okay so they get up to yeah, four 30 seconds four 30 so, second segments yeah. like commercial that's great yeah mm -hmm. absolutely that's fantastic and what and what is it it's just like a taste of the brewery or the vineyard so we've uh i've added it to where um our drivers were complaining and the people were complaining because we had this long list of videos of all of our advertisers and they're like, I've seen the same video 10 times because every time I get on the bus, <laughs> the, you know, the drivers hit and play. Uh, so we actually have it set up to where we know what they're going to watch from three notch, uh, from them getting picked up at their hotel to three notch before we launch all of our tours. Uh, and so from that travel time, it's saying important things to know what's going on in the tour today. Uh, all of our hashtags, follow us, like us. I throw in a little Live Seville uh, stab there. <laughs> Uh, but then when they get to three notch, it just sits on a screen of like welcome. And then once we take off, uh, it's actually showing the first couple places that are options on the route. So as they're going to Ragged Branch so, and they have so the, the option to the get off there. the content is relevant to Correct. the route. Correct, exactly. Yeah. And so they're seeing you know, what's going on. Uh, yeah. Second or third stops we build in, what, what stops and, they might be seeing. And the way it's designed is not to sell anything. It's just to to pretty much to highlight yeah. and give them a heads up what's next mm -hmm. so they kind of know you know, what to expect and visualize the tasting rooms and things like that. You could totally add, and you guys obviously touched on this already, you could totally add to this vertically integrated company, like a place that the folks could crash and stay at. Like, you know, and you guys are obviously yeah. brainstorming this. Oh, like, we, see yeah, the yeah, wheels yeah, turning yeah. right here. Yeah, yeah. You're so, like, how much of this do we let out to the market? <laughs> you right? Kind yeah. of I, mean, I own a lot of URLs. Uh, <laughs> I mean, right. Why don't a couple of which ends up being Seville Hotel, Seville Hostel, Why not Hostel Seville, well, Hostel I mean, obviously, VA, it costs a hell of a yeah. lot of money. Right, right, right yeah. exactly. Yeah. Money is definitely an issue, but also, you know, Hopon is still growing mm -hmm. so fast that it does require a lot with, of yeah. attention. So if we stop to do something else now, it would hurt Hopon. So, but you're right. No, it is going to happen. You know, we, we're looking at land, we're looking at different opportunities that we do think about lodging as an option for sure. Uh, Maybe yeah. simple, like, like Travis's model, like stay Charlottesville. Yeah, and, right. I mean, that's a beautiful. The difference would own. Travis Wilburn is yeah, a Travis, hospitality guy. Great, guy. great guy. Talk great to us friend, about yeah. what you think he's doing well. And is he a competitor? I mean, in some ways, yeah. he is a competitor. Yeah, yes. Because he's got the transportation a, piece. Yes and no, but I mean, he doesn't have a hop on buses, right? Right. right. So, competitor, no. We send people their way. Yeah. I'm sure they send people our way as well. Uh, Charlottesville, that's the beautiful thing about Charlottesville. There's so much opportunities here that more companies are welcome. You know, the little Croze, the Croze uh, trolley yeah, the just right. came into yeah, business. That's an awesome they're group. coming in constantly we're here. Super, to we're super excited yeah. for yeah. them. I mean, it's a great you know, concept that the little trolley. We're already going. I mean, the more it's, people that know about Croze, exactly. ultimately, the more people that are going to know about us, the more people that are going to get exactly. so, I mean, and, and I love entrepreneurship. I celebrate it all, especially local entrepreneurs. That is very niche. Right. Yeah. That is so niche. Exactly. You know, yours is more like... We're like broad. We're broadband. Exactly. We're broadband. They're niche, but there's a niche that yeah. does exist That's right true. so which is great so we're you know we talk to them already if they need anything from us or help to you know help them through the beginning which right. we already expected I love going back to Dave Travis Warwick, yeah, exactly. Tides flood all shit. exactly but going back to Travis and what I love about Travis is he has big visions right the guy is he he's sees far now, stay winter, he, he sees wide and you know I really appreciate it that about him it also helps to have some Bill Chapman behind you Exactly, okay, Bill, Bill, but I mean, Bill's a great guy too. You know, yeah. we do a lot of business yeah. with him. So, well, I mean, yeah. and in a lot of ways, he's doing that vertically integrated concept with what is it, the Oakhurst Inn? Yep. Yeah. Um, over off JPA. And that's a great. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they do a great. I mean, we're not going to uh, knock anyone. Right, right. Of right. course, no. I want to, you know, same battle path. them with. You know, <laughs> it's a was a cooperation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well said. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. What is the future of Charlottesville? You think? And we're an hour and two minutes in here. Well, you guys are crushing time it. Time do fly. Yeah. Huh? We have what, six more to go? No, we have plenty of time. Okay. We, there's no rules that I look like. <laughs> six more years. Okay. No rules. <laughs> um, Charlottesville is going to be, I see the downtown fighting the Northern Virginian expansion of it turning into every other block and having the same stores repeated over and over. And I yeah. think 29. Like Holly, 29. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's going to be a separated, I mean, I, I think there'll be two distinct areas that 
And you already see it. You go to shops at Stonefield and North, right. and it looks completely different right. than I joke on this show that I try not to area. go north of Barracks Road. Yeah, I, right. why would you? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's not as pretty. Right, right. right. <laughs> but when we're talking about you know, bringing people in from outside areas and transportation, I mean, Highway 29 is a great resource to have people come into Charlottesville right. that you know, could go live elsewhere. Um, Are you worried about the future? I think I, it's, I'm worried. This not is from I'm my worried. company, but from uh, somebody that lives here. Right, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm worried suspicious. that this is going to turn well, into like San Francisco. We have a satellite office in New Providence, New Jersey. Okay. okay. And we go up there for a week every 90 days. Myself and that guy over there. And we service our clients for a week every 90 days. And I love New Providence and I love New Jersey and I love those clients because we are charging 25% more than we get in Charlottesville. <laughs> Okay, and we're still like 30% below New Jersey average. rates. Yeah. And, you know, and we're using yeah. labor here. Perfect okay, so it's great. Yeah. It's great. But where I'm going with this is New Providence is literally like, it's a bedroom community in Manhattan. There's so much freaking money over there. And, and I'll cut to the chase. New Providence is like a white, wealthy island. And where I'm yeah. going with this is, in a lot of ways, I am worried that that's what's going to happen to Charles. Well, it is. And, uh, you know, it's already happening, right? Just... An example, this weekend I went out to on a tour and I uh, went to King Family Vineyards. Amazing. I love that place. And I got married there. And we walk into the hostess and she handled my clients a pager. I was like, whoa, a pager for a tasting. So 15 minutes wait and now we have pagers. So the whole experience is changing, right? Uh, that's for a Saturday. So I think we're, get, we're going to go in the direction that Charlottesville is going to become a major destination for tourism. But also locally, you're right, you know, it's going to become a more affluent than it is right now. And that's just because of the type of businesses that we're attracting. You know, the downtown mall, uh, ice rinks, is going to become an awesome technology building. But yeah. those are high jobs. Geoffrey Woodruff, on exactly. the second floor over there, yeah. looking over here. There he's going to do something it's, crazy. It's going to be great yeah, for it. Yeah. And I think that's going to... Do you like that? I, I do, because I think... And the reason I ask that that's is because money. when you were managing Blue Light... Um, the downtown mall was very different then. It was much more intimate. Yeah, it was. And so there's right about the same time that I moved here is when they took all the benches off the downtown mall, which was a very, it was uh, the Occupy, was it uh, Occupy Wall Street that yeah. took over uh, what was then Lee Park. Uh, and then just seeing kind of the aftermath of that and, you know, the mall has already changed uh, three, the, three different. Pattern? There's more to do. Okay. I think there's definitely things that could brighten it, like the Landmark Hotel going right. away or becoming something would be a huge uh, benefit. But putting the seats back, uh, you know, putting benches, making it more approachable to people want to go down and hang out on the mall, uh, and then just do a better job of enacting legislation or you know rules about. So Joan Fenton, who owns much of the downtown mall. Joan Fenton was one of the huge folks that got the benches removed from the downtown mall. Okay. And her viewpoint is having the benches, on, which I, you which know, is, you yeah, know, yeah. having the benches on the mall encourages the Lottery. homeless population yeah. to hang on the mall, which negatively. Which they're doing anyway. Which negative, she which, says negatively impacts the business which, in downtown. But they're already Thoughts? doing it. Yeah, yeah. They're already doing that. And, and just to remove the, the benches so that you can, like, if you want to grab a bite to eat, grab dumplings and not sit in there like you, it's, we've privatized the mall without privatizing it. And, and if we were to just privatize the mall and create you know, entry barriers at each of the road entries, we could do cool things like have festivals to where you could right. walk around and you know, have yeah. one ABC license for the whole event. That would be sick. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. eventually I think it will happen. But going back to the technological jobs in the downtown uh -huh. mall, I think it's awesome. Here's the reason why. Okay. By having you know, high education and high paying jobs in the area will kind of incentivize our local young youth to really work hard through education to get those jobs, right? So I think it can be a positive to the local community as well. The, but playing devil's advocate, yeah. yep. playing devil's advocate with you, if that is the case, um, and, and I honestly think Joffrey Woodruff at Code, the Center of Developing Entrepreneurs, it's yes. what's going to the Ice Park. Exactly. If that's the case, there's gonna, and there's not a middle and lower, not middle and lower class jobs, I mean, Andre, you don't worry that it's just gonna be like, I no, mean, six-figure like salaries everywhere? Yeah, no, the venture capitalist playground? Yeah, yeah, right. Which, right, but that's when the service industry comes the, into play, right? But so, if we're the, the population that's able to get plucked from, 
I mean, those things exist at other major cities anyway. If we can highlight the entrepreneurial spirit and ideas of people in Charlottesville and then they're able to use that as a resource, yeah, that's awesome. Right. I'm but, totally but, doing but, on but, this because I'm a cap I'm, I run a for-profit business, yes. so right. I have a capitalistic mindset. I have a conscious capitalistic mindset right. where I'm focused on being a social entrepreneur and leaving Charlottesville in a better place. I'm torn on this, and I'll throw it to you. Um, you're also uh, uh, you know, a social entrepreneur. Right. Um, what is our role? As a business owner here in this community and as so the leaders. I think as a local business owner, our responsibility is number one, create jobs, right? Number two, pay create a living wage. Jobs, yeah. Exactly. You know, there's no one can survive a minimum wage. Yeah. The minimum wage for us is, you know. It's not the minimum. You exactly. Know, we, the minimum we, wage, that's not we the minimum We start our drives at 13, but mo yeah. all of them, 90% of them makes a 15. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, makes, 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 make you be able to afford things, right? Uh -huh. So I think that's the responsibility, to create jobs that are stable and pay a living wage. Um, going back to the six-figure jobs everywhere, in a way, you know, we all want that. We all want to be successful in our careers, right? So to have the industry locally can benefit people on the lower class, absolutely. I, I'm a firm believer on that, that through education, they can get the degrees, get the education to join that. But also, as you said, you know, Charlotte is a very welcome city for entrepreneurs. Now look at us here. You know we have great opportunities here. So if that's something that people we both feel had privileges like, though that allowed us to, to be here. I mean, there would just be our work ethic. Yes, I mean there's things that yes and no. Well, here. John, yeah. yes and no. I'm a foreigner. I'm an immigrant, right? I came from. And you're learning. I English came from Brazil, well, right? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> that proves to you that you know anyone with the work ethics, the willingness to work hard, the opportunity is there, right? So if you work hard, if you look through... If that's been a constant ways. reminder to you your, your whole life, or if you've had mentors that have demonstrated that to you your whole life, True. or just in general, if you've never been exposed to someone that was a positive influence on you, then you're not going to necessarily know... Right, that goes back to the environment, right? Yeah. So your environment, if we have an environment in this city... That's right. what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. 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 Uh, but if we have a positive environment good examples, then that can influence positively the lower class as well. Um, Jacqueline says, I say, I agree with you fellas. Uh, Jacqueline Greiger from BBQ Exchange, and she just taken Craig Hartman's business. Jacqueline, I'm giving you props. Mm -hmm. I saw it firsthand with our wedding. She, Jacqueline, tell Craig to give you another ring. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're taking Craig Hartman's business to another level, Jacqueline. She says, I say this all the time, and I agree with the fellas. The more business we all do well, the more business we can all share. Yep. Your thoughts Absolutely. on that, John Craig? Yeah, I mean, rising, rising tide. tides. I, I, yeah. By creating us as a better destination, I mean, by highlighting anything that makes us unique, like the, what is it, the, um, the secret room, um, escape, escape, seat, room. escape room. Yeah. And then there's another, like, that's cool, that's unique. Why aren't there more people with random, you know, specific ideas that can then leach off of things that are coming right I mean, it's, it's like hop on for example how the impact a hop on has so we have an average about 140 to 160 people on the saturdays right awesome. a lot of those people are staying hotels right they're eating at restaurants Dropping ducats. Right? Yep. they are they're buying beers and wine so the economy is kind of benefit local they're economy going to so shop at, you exactly know, so and then stores. you know and that's we feel responsible that, hey, we're helping people to come here. So I think as an attraction to the destination is our job to kind of help to promote that so more people can come and more dollars can be spent here. I love it. I love it. Yeah. We'll close the show on this. Um, and then uh, we're doing something a little different. You guys uh, will have you uh, exit through that little gap there. And okay. then Harris and I are going to recap the show. But okay. before we close the show, let's create some sizzle reels here. And we'll have you engage with this camera here. Okay. And you engage with that one. Right. And then we go anywhere you want or Same I can kind of throw a question to you and the question I wanted to throw to you is like what makes Seville Hop on Tours awesome what's the future of Seville Hop on Tours and what you love about uh, running Seville Hop on Tours so the show is yours John Craig awesome um, it's been great just to get the support from everyone uh, if it being just an idea that Andre and I had at uh, me drinking beers at Three Notch Brewing Company and talking to, to Dave about wanting to come in and show people the backside of Three Notch and taking in one private tour to now, you know, like he just said, 140 people that get to have somewhat of that experience uh, and just to be part of it all. It's, you know, every day is, is exciting. And I think you know, as we grow, the future of Hop On is endless. I mean, 
any small town that has a demographic similar to ours with things in their backyard would benefit from what we could bring to the table. And so I think as long as we, we stay true to each area being, um, each new venture being a local Authentic. spot, a local entity, um, we'll continue to have success. I love that answer. Sizzle Reel that. Brianne Tomko, thank you for watching. Jonas Smith, thank you for watching. Guys, up and down the eastern seaboard, we got people watching right now. Like and share the feed if you could do us that favor. Pablo, our boy is watching. Play racquetball with Pablo at ACAC. He's a big fan of you guys. Um, same question to you. Um, what you love about Seabell Hop On Tours, the future of Seabell Hop On Tours, your role in the community, anywhere you sure. want to go. Absolutely. So what I love about Seville Hop On Tours is the fact that we made wine tasting, beer tasting, craft, affordable. So now people have the opportunity to go and experience those amazing destinations at an affordable price. And so we kind of opened the market there. Um, I love that we have an impact on the local community through our drivers, that they get paid a living wage, so we're making a difference on people's lives. I'm thankful for the partnership that I have with John, and you know Sharon is awesome, and Charlie, my wife, also helps the business tremendously, so I'm very thankful for them. Um, the future, I think, you know, Hopon is going to grow to be a business that is going to make us very proud, uh, for sure. I think 15 buses now, it's not even 20% uh, of we're going to grow. I think we're going to grow to different markets and probably have, you know, close to 60 or 80 buses at one point. That's in sick. the next five years, that I'm pretty confident that that's going to happen. Um, and, you know, I just kind of uh, freestyling here. I think the most important thing is, you know, besides all the businesses and all the success that we have is, I think as a, someone who lives in Charlottesville, whose families live in Charlottesville, it's important that we care about this community, that we appreciate what we have, because we see hundreds of people, thousands of people coming on the weekends to enjoy what we have, and a lot of times we don't appreciate, you know, and if everyone did something during the week that living here, that probably would help the local businesses during the week, you know, to go out to a winery or a brewery or have lunch or dinner on the downtown mall during the week that we live here, that would, could benefit that midweek business tremendously. And, uh, you know, I think it's important that we also spend time with our families, you know, it's not talk about time early, it's like, you know, spend time with your kids, you know, put down that cell phone that we're all addicted to it, that's kind of crazy how much time it takes from us. Just spend time with them, create those memories, because that's the only thing that truly matters at the end of the day, is the time that we spend with family, friends, that's all that matters. Andre Xavier getting deep over here. I know, man. <laughs> and now I feel bad for... Like, Don't cry, John. Yeah, I see you're yeah, tearing out there. Yeah. That's money, dude. That's like the best yeah. thing you said. Thanks. Pointing as hell right there. Is He's it your it birthday? Uh, no, not quite. It'll be Thursday. Okay. <laughs> People saying happy birthday, John Gray. It'll, it'll be go. soon. 30? <laughs> yeah. 30 years old? Be old. The big 3 -0. What are you? Uh, 35. 35. You guys yeah. are young. Young. Yeah. Um, you crushed it. Uh, Tolbert, I think we got some sizzles there. Judah, did you get their email addresses? You did, and we got the photos. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate it. Respect. Thank you. No, thank A lot you. of respect. Respect you. Yeah, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, absolutely. And we can go to Studio Cam, and that's a good gap right there. Cool. Okay. Um, and then Tolber and I, because I like to get Tolber in the show. Um, J-Dubs, you want to let him out? Um, that would be huge. Thank you. Yeah. Bill Craig for... Helping me with, uh, Bill Craig, yeah. is it your dad? Yeah, hey, your yeah, son's giving up. you props right now, Bill <laughs> Craig. Giving you some props right now. Harris Tolber, I want to get you in the mix first, so get ready to go, baby. And uh, I'm going to say your thoughts on the interview, what you learn, all the above. Show's yours, sir. All right. Uh, yeah, Jerry, it's an awesome interview. I love uh, John and Andre's dynamic. I think that they, they, they seem like two guys that make a really great team. Um, you know, I think they contrast uh have kind of contrasting uh kind of mindsets in some ways and i think that they complement each other really well um i i really love what or i thought it was really interesting when they were talking about uh how a12 in, uh, specifically affected their business because that's something we've talked a lot about on the show and um when andre was 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 saying that um from his 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 other business that tours, his history tours had, had gone up 400%. Um, that, that's really interesting that like people are being drawn to the area because of the publicity that A12 has brought to the area. Uh, yeah, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that, Jerry? Um, I thought the interview was amazing. Um, I really respect Andre and John because they are building something um, 
through sweat equity and through hard work and through working in a partnership. And you know, I can tell you right now, um, working in a partnership is not always easy. Um, you know, I have businesses where I'm the sole owner, and I think in some ways that's made entrepreneurship easier because I can come in and call the shots and say, "Let's go, fellas. We're going down this way, and we're going to go balls to the wall, and we're going to make it happen." Um, so I respect anyone that's able to successfully work in a partnership. Um, that is not easy to do. Um, I also respect anyone that has a dream and an idea and they take this dream or the idea and this conversation that they have and they bring it to market and they take it not only to market but they do it in a way that makes Charlottesville better. And a lot of the businesses we feature here on the I Love Siebel Show, a lot of the entrepreneurs and a lot of the people in general, what they're doing and why we're championing and celebrating them is they're making Charlottesville and Central Virginia and the Commonwealth better. Uh, and that's the whole mission of I Love Seville. Our tagline is the best of Charlottesville, Virginia. So if we're able through some sweat equity and some, through some hard work, if we're able to champion an Andre or celebrate a John and say, look at what these guys are doing and look at how they've improved Charlottesville, then I feel like we are helping the community as well. Because there's so many amazing people in Charlottesville that need to be celebrated and need to be championed. And, and I think sometimes we get caught up in negative stuff, especially with the ubiquitous nature of social social media, that the negative stuff kind of like uh, gains momentum, and it shouldn't. Because I think if you use social media correctly, you can do it in a way where you can celebrate a John Craig and a celebrate an Andre Xavier. Um, and I love these guys. I love the hard work they put into it. I've seen them evolve their business um, from when they started with one bus. And the reason I know that is because we did a spotlight on them. And Andre and John, I don't know if you remember, we did a spotlight on you on, uh, on I Love Seville. And we went, myself, Lauren, and Judah, outside Three Notch Brewery, and we got on the bus and, and we wrote uh, like a, a feature on I Love Sevo about what you guys are doing. And to see where you guys are at now with 15 freaking buses, I mean, it's amazing. It is the American dream. And we need to celebrate and we need to uh, put on a pedestal and we need to encourage small business owners and entrepreneurship because that is what's going to help continue driving Charlottesville in a positive direction. Especially entrepreneurs like John and Andre who are conscious capitalists social entrepreneurs. It's not just about a buck for them. And I can see that in the interview. What it's about for them is how can we make a for-profit business improve the Charlottesville community, and that's what we stand for here at I Love Seville. How can we do a for-profit business that is also donating money to charity? And in 11 years in this office, 11 years in this building, that we own a lion's share of, in 11 years in May, our business has donated over $113,000 to charity over 113,000, and we are about to do another uh, donation in conjunction with one of our clients, Greenberry's Coffee Company, to Caring for Creatures. Caring for Creatures is Central Virginia's first no-kill animal sanctuary. And animals mean a lot to me, mean a lot to Judah, mean a lot to Harris, mean a lot to Lauren, and we are taking a nonprofit and caring for creatures, and we are putting them on a pedestal and celebrating them because they need attention. And I think anytime you're able to get entrepreneurship in a capitalist mindset working in conjunction with leaving the community in a better place then the community is going to be better and i see someone that's watching the show right now and laura fauner laura fauner is soon to be the owner of dooners in ivy and i love some laura fauner she busts her ass in the kitchen all the time at dooners yet she has time to 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 spend feeding folks that are in a, in a tough luck situation or homeless through Patchum, and I love that. And this is what I love about Charlottesville in general. What I freaking love about Charlottesville, and what I, I love this town so much. What I love about Charlottesville is there are people like John and Andre and Laura Fonner and Billy Kernick who's watching right now um, that are so focused and committed on leaving the community better than when they first arrived. And that's what we're all about. Um, I loved today's interview, was so impressed with Seville Hop on Tours. I'm so impressed with the sense of entrepreneurship in Charlottesville, and I think the future is so bright for Charlottesville and Central Virginia, I really do. And I'm so proud to have like uh, my family here and like be a, a part of this community. Like so proud, guys, so proud. We close the show the same way every time. Guys, live your life by the golden rule and with a golden rule mindset. Treat others like you want to be treated yourself. If you treat others like you want to be treated yourself, do you have any idea what that's going to do for our community? It's going to make our community so much better. 
Oh, and we need it. Um, I'm Jerry Miller for Harris Tolber, for Judah Wickhauer, for Lauren Linsky. This is the I Love Seville show on the I Love Seville network. Tomorrow is a restaurant roundtable. Um, we're going to welcome Catherine Matthews from Iron Poffles and Coffee to the show. I'm going to reach out to my boy Peter Castiglione from Maya Restaurant. I have a message in with Courtney Tyler. Courtney is one of the co-owners of Tillman's on the downtown mall. We're going to spotlight the restaurant industry and entrepreneurs in the restaurant, restaurant industry tomorrow. And we're going to celebrate uh, female entrepreneurs. Um, and we're going to celebrate um, people making Charlottesville better. That's what we're all about at I Love Seville. I'm Jerry Miller. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon.